Hi, I'm Takani, and you can't feel me because I'm untouchable. Today we'll be learning about the wonderful cheese called Baby Bell, Baby Bell, Baby Bell Cheese. In a world of cheese, string, spreadable, lock, shredded, sliced, crumbled, braided, fondue, stick, processed, balls, logs, wheels, curd, hard, soft, semi-soft, and probably many more. There's a lot of cheese in the world, and I am a big fan. In the world of cheese, there exists a tiny wheel of mystery, wrapped in wax and presented like a cheesy present. A gift that never disappoints, unless you're lactose intolerant. But we know that's not stopping you from devouring cheese. Baby Bell Cheese. This delightful snack has found a permanent place in my home. Experiencing Baby Bell Cheese for the first time was magical. I unwrapped a delightfully creamy original Baby Bell and popped that bad boy in my mouth. And at first, it was like plain mozzarella. But then, that stank hit. You know, that cheesy kick that you get when the cheese isn't mozzarella? The bite that makes you taste that stinky cheese in your mouth. It leaves you questioning, did I just eat a sock? And why was it delicious? I realize I'm not making cheese sound appetizing. Just take a whiff and bite some good old aged cheddar and you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm making this video. After snacking on my first Baby Bell cheese bite, I just wanted to know what kind of cheese it was. It tasted familiar, yet different. I stumbled upon their website and spent the next five hours reading all about Baby Bell cheese. Do I have other videos to edit? Of course. But Baby Bell cheese is all I can think about. So I let my mind take the wheel. And here we are. Just a quick note before we get started. Do not eat your cheese like this. This is a wax. <laughs> it has a little tab over here for you to rip the wax off. The cheese is underneath. Don't make the same mistake I did. Wax is not good. Chapter 1. The History of Baby Bell In 1865, at just 23 years old, Jules Bell started Le Groupe Bell, the Bell Group, in the Jura region of France. He worked in his cellars refining and trading Emmental, which is a holy Swiss cheese. No, not blessed by the Pope. It just has holes in it, which makes it holy. He also made Gruyere and Comte. When Jules passed in 1904, his son Leon Bell took over. Then in 1907, Leon got word of a new processing technique, a way to preserve melted cheese. Leon was inspired to expand his cheese empire, past the few outlets that he supplied. After the First World War, the cheese industry took off, and Leon saw the potential of processed cheese. Leon Bell not only wanted to offer a cheese that's practical and easy to store, but also tasty. April 16th, 1921. Leon Bell registered the trademark for La Vache Qui Rit, which you may know as the laughing cow. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> then, in 1922, the comical red cow, with a huge smile and cheese wheel-shaped earrings, was drawn by Benjamin Rabier. Then in 1929, they set up their first subsidiary outside of France, in the United Kingdom. By the 1970s, Bell had ventured into markets far beyond Europe, establishing subsidiaries in the United States, Morocco, Syria, and later expanding to Japan and China. In fact, more than 80% of Baby Bell cheese is sold outside of France highlighting the global reach and appeal of their delicious cheese. In 1976, they created a Puria Cube, a bite-sized snack specifically made for social gatherings. Then in 1990, many Baby Bell cheeses were launched and promoted as the anywhere, anytime snack. Just unwrap your gift, separate lay wax. I'm gonna enjoy this cheese for now, thanks. Nice cheese. Oh. Now that we know how Baby Bell cheese was born, let's talk about how it was made. Chapter 2. 
the farm program. In the U.S., Baby Bell only sources their cheese from farms that follow the National Dairy Farmers Assuring Responsible Management Program, or FARM. And it's here I'd like to ask, why aren't all farmers required to follow this program? The National Dairy Farmers Assuring Responsible Management Program is for dairy farmers, of course, which it's great that it helps the cows be in an environment that actually benefits them instead of allowing farmers to just do whatever this is, which is fantastic. But may I ask, what about the chickens or the pigs or even the cows that are bred for beef? I think this Farmers Assuring Responsible Management Program should be for all farmers. From this point on, I'm just going to call the National Dairy Farmers Assuring Responsible Management Program as FARM. FARM was launched in 2009 by the Nation Milk Producers Federation in a partnership with Dairy Management Incorporated. The goal is to set high standards for dairy farmers, focusing mainly on areas like animal care, environmental stewardship, workforce development, and even antibiotic use each with science-based standards and resources to help dairy farmers improve their practices. The farm program assures that people like you and me know that the dairy farmers are taking their very best care of their dairy cows, protecting the environment, and producing quality milk from happy cows. What tastes better than a happy cow? There's a reason Wagyu beef is so expensive. It's because they massage their cows or something. Farm works with 98% of dairy farms. And here I also ask, what about the other 2%? Can I have their names so I can avoid them? You know, because I regularly go to dairy farms. They also continuously update their research on animal care. Farm even uses on-farm evaluations and third-party verifications to ensure that those in farm are following farm. Not only does farm ensure high standards for cows and calves, but they ensure the safety and well-being of the dairy farm workers. That's right. This is a form a union video. Chapter 3. Union time, baby. Unions play a vital role in protecting workers' rights by ensuring fair wages, safe working conditions, and providing a unified voice for employees to advocate for themselves to get better labor laws and protections. Now, let's dive into the history of unions and talk about why they're so important. Whoa! Back up! <laughs> Yeah, get down there. Livable wage. I told you guys. Don't bring this up. Chapter 3. Cheese and Health. The original Baby Bell was 200 grams of delicious cheese encased in red wax. And now, they're only a measly 20 grams. Which, I guess is for the best. According to my very limited research, you're not supposed to eat more than like 40 grams of cheese a day. <laughs> These freaking people. Am I right? What do they know? Who are they to tell me that I can't have 200 grams of cheese in one sitting? Just because they went to school for education and learning about the body and studying scientist stuff? Okay. They might have a point. Maybe they do know what they're talking about. According to the study on cheese consumption and health outcomes, eating around 40 grams of cheese a day can provide some surprising health benefits. This study, done by gathering up a bunch of other studies and running some complicated scientist math, shows that cheese can lower your risk for heart disease, strokes, and even provides calcium and K2, which are great for your bones. By supplying your body with calcium, it allows your bones to get stronger and lowers your risk for fractions and apparently dementia. Now, don't go eating 500 grams of cheese in one sitting. Cheese, no matter how tempting, should always be consumed in moderation. So two baby bells a day might actually keep the doctor away. But don't stop seeing your doctor. You should still check in with your doctor regularly. If you can afford it, that is. America, heck yeah. We don't have universal health care. Chapter 4. What's in Baby Bell Cheese? In the introduction, I mentioned that this all started because I wanted to know what the flavor of the original Baby Bell Cheese was. And that's literally all I wanted to know. But now I'm filled with so much cheese knowledge. So what is the original Baby Bell flavor? It's Adam, a semi-hard cheese that originates from the town Adam, which is in the Netherlands. 
It has a mild, nutty flavor and a firm and smooth texture. A go-to for any charcuterie board. The ingredients include pasteurized cultured milk, salt, and microbial enzymes. Pasteurized means that it's been heated to a high temperature to kill all the harmful bacteria. And cultured means that beneficial bacteria cultures, like lactobacillus, have been added to the milk fermentation process and helps convert the lactose, which is basically the sugar in the milk, into lactic acid, which helps in making the curds. And salt, well, that's salt. It plays a role as a flavor enhancer and aids in preservation by controlling the moisture and preventing unwanted bacteria growth. Microbial enzymes derive from microorganisms, like bacteria or fungi. They're naturally produced. These are essential to delicious cheese. Chapter 5. How is it made? After they test standardize and pasteurize the cheese, they send it to a little molding machine. And after the cheese takes shape and ripens, it unloads onto a conveyor belt. Like satisfactory, but much more sanitary. In the video by Homemade Nation, they didn't show how it was waxed. Apparently, it's a big secret. Maybe they dump the cheese into wax molds, and the wax molds itself around the cheese. Or maybe they have a wizard in the back who just snaps his finger and turns all of the delicious baby bell cheese into wax-covered baby bell cheese. Only they know. After they add the wax, they send it to crystallization, or like a little cold water bath. By placing the wax-coated cheese in a cold bath, you slow down the cheese metabolic process while creating the perfect condition conditions while creating the perfect conditions for calcium lactate or tyrosine crystals to form in the cheese. The cold temperatures combined with the wax barrier can also help with natural dehydration. Now, why do we want calcium lactate or tyrosine? Well, they provide that delicious crunchy texture that you find in well-aged cheeses. Think of a crumbly gouda or parmesan. It's considered a sign of high-quality well-aged cheese, and now they can do it by machine, which, in my opinion, is kind of cool. No more waiting a hundred years for our cheese to become perfectly a hundred-year-old cheese. We can just, like, throw it in a machine and age it quicker. After they finish crystallizing it, they wrap it up and send it through another conveyor belt to be placed in their little tiny nets and tagged. Finally, they're hand-boxed by workers and placed in a cold room, then sent to stores. And now, it's here. It's crazy how this delicious cheese all started from a well-nurtured and cared-for cow. Thank you to the farm program for ensuring that these cows and humans are treated humanely, as all animals should be. Maybe we should start working on that. And that was my deep dive into Baby Bell cheese. Why did I make this video? Because I wanted to. And I'm glad that you clicked on it and watched it all the way through to the end. Let me know what your favorite cheese is down below. I personally prefer anything that's super spicy like a good ghost pepper cheese. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you want to, and next time you peel this red wax, I hope you think of me. Stay gooey, my friends. Bye, guys.